Snake Eyes is now at full power in Master Duel, which means it's at the same level as the tier 0 deck in the TCG. So let me show you the optimal list for now. So right here we have the deck. This deck is fucking crazy. Well, one thing you really need to keep in mind with the Snake Eyes deck is once the full combo has resolved, you are probably not winning. Some people are coping that they can play board breakers and just break up the board going second or play through it in some smart way. But even even if that was the case, the fact that said board is also backed up by a billion hand traps means no you are not board breakering this deck which means you need to stop them instantly and the best way to do that is Valor Valor on Snake Eye Ash and Valor on Diabell Star are your best bets to beat them so you will also notice that I play a bunch of cards like that so first of all we have our triple Valor again best card against that matchup of course after Imperm which is the same thing then we have Jet Synchron which is required for our Formula Synchron Borload Savage and Baron lines I'll try to show you some combo replays at the end of the video then we have triple Snake Eye Ash so this is of course the best starter then we have one snake eye oak which is an important extender in order to do some of the lines again combos at the end of the video then we have two poplar which is either surge by snake eye ash or the brand new bonfire but more on that later then we have triple maxi because maxi is broken triple ash because maxi is broken two mourner now personally i'm a big fan of three mourner but fitting them is just so incredibly hard i mean if you find a slot where you're like damn i can cut this or, or maybe go to 41 even to try and fit that extra mourner go ahead because i do think this card is very important you want to be able to mourner the diabell star they have like six chances of opening up diabell star and you only have like two mourners you also have to open like imperms and veilers to stop the ash so yeah you want to maximize your chances now the reason i wasn't able to fit the third mourner is because of these two buddies the bistuals now why am i playing bistuals because i don't actually believe that these cards are that great into snake eye they are fine into snake eye because you can hit ip when they try to set it from the graveyard into their spell and trap zone with Flamberge, or you can hit Link Karibo when they're trying to attach it to Borload Savage Dragon. So these are always trading fine, but the problem is that they still make the majority of the board, making these Bistuals pretty whack. Now, of course, if your opponent just misplays like mad, you might still be able to beat them. But so in general, these are not great against Snake Eye. However, it is not legal to play six impermanence. So these are basically like shitty options. Some people also think of Nibiru, but Nibiru is honestly a hot garbage into this deck. Every basic line plays through Nibiru. So then people say, oh, but you then have to pair it. At which point I say, if I pair any of these three cards, I also stop the combo and I stop it for sure, which is way better than praying that my nib resolves. Now, the reason we are playing the Bistuals is because it's really solid into Unchained. Being able to get rid of the Yama or even just in general, putting a Druid's Worm onto your board is great into Unchained. And I think it's like the only reliable way to really beat them. If we were able to play like two Druid's Worm, I would actually prefer that over the Magnemuth plus the Druid's Worm because Druid's Worm is just way better into that matchup. And the reason I'm not playing a Board Breaker instead here because Board Breakers are actually great into Unchained is because Board Breakers are ass into Snake Eyes. So for that reason, these two buddies, again, if Druid's Worm ever came to two or so, I would play that instead. And if you can find the room for the third Mourner, you can do that too. Maybe you see so much Snake Eye that you cut to one Magnemuth for the third Mourner. That's fine. Then we have our triple Dia Bell Star. Of course, we want to max out on our starters in this deck, especially because it gives you extra pushes through hand traps. If you start with a Snake Eye Ash and they Imperm it and then you go Diabell Star, GG, you still won. Then we have Double Flamberge because it does come up. Also, look at this beautiful royal finish, baby. What a beauty. Then we have one, one for one. Again, more pushes. And Triple Bonfire. So this is the new card. It essentially says add one level four or lower Pyro Monster from your deck to your hand. So let's say you go like normal Summon Snake Eye Ash. They Imperm you. Then you go haha, Bonfire effect, plays Poplar, boom, and you keep on playing. Another issue I had when playing this deck pre-Bonfire was that some Sometimes you were stopped by hand traps a little too much because you didn't actually have that many pushes. So whenever people would say, oh, Snake Eyes is not a problem, it's not tier zero. It's actually just because the deck didn't have Bonfire yet. Even though it was already, in my opinion, you know, best deck by a landslide on Master Duel, now it is properly going to be tier zero. <laughs> Bonfire is like the final push this deck needed to play through virtually everything. So now Master Duel is just mindless hand trap wars. Enjoy. Then we have OSS, the spell for Diabell Star. And we have the field spell, also part of a bunch of the combos. Again, I will show you combo at the end of the video. Two call by him because Maxi is broken. One cross out because Maxi is broken. But interestingly enough, cross out finally is also good in the TCG purely because stopping the Imperm or the Veiler from resolving on your Snake Eye Asher Diabell Star is the difference between winning and losing. So if we could play more cross out, even despite Maxi, we would. 
Then we have Triple Wanted, of course, very crucial. Way better to open up with than Diabell Star because it gives you a free draw. And then finally, Triple Imperm. Again, if you actually could play like limitless amounts of cards in Yu-Gi-Oh, you would play like 15 impermanence, I think, in this format. You will just play 15 Imperm and then you would say good to go because every other card is just worse Imperm. This is worse Imperm. This is worse Imperm. Ash is just bad into this deck. Like it only trades if they exactly open Snake Eye Ash. But okay, extra deck. Formula Synchron, Borolode, and Baron. This is just a Synchro package. I will show you the combo when you open with Snake Eye Ash plus Diabell Star. We will put up a board with these buddies and it's GG. Link Karibo, very important because you can link off Poplar easily that way. And then on the follow-up, you can also dodge Imperm and Valor and so forth. Nightmare Phoenix, outing spells and traps can be cute, I guess. Hida, best card in the mirror. This card defines the mirror. Well, that's not actually true. I'm lying. Because the mirror is defined by whoever opens the hand traps and trying to break the board going second is actually fake. Only if your opponent plays like a bonobo can you actually break said board in engine. Then we have IP, a part of the end board. We have dark, which can also be important in the mirror because you can always turn your level ones into a linker ebo in order to make dark, in order to steal their Diabell star. And that way you are basically, you know, comboing true stuff, getting access to OSS when you maybe previously didn't. Next we have Nightmare Unicorn. So this card is like the final weak part of this deck because the end boards this deck produces is very often IP in your spell and trap zone. You special summon it out with either field spell or flamberge and then the IP in the TCG could go into SP Little Knight but here we're forced into Unicorn which is so much weaker but it's still an interrupt that's still pretty solid. Then we have Selene. This card has a lot of extra utility in this deck because we can have a bunch of extra spells very easily you know because the monsters are treated as spells and also you can revive your Diabell Star you know so on the follow up you can like revive Five Diabell Star, set your OSS again and keep going. Now we have Promethean Princess. Of course, this card is like fucking cracked. And Blue Whale just makes your Promethean Princess better. Now, of course, in this game, we don't have Kirin yet. So you don't get Kirin Pop Fire King kind of combos with Amblo Whale. And we also don't have the Raging Phoenix to do the Zelantis OTK. But you need some Link for Fire to get rid of your Princess. So it's here. And Sprite Elf could also be an option if you have like access to Link 2 in your line. Some people have been doing that. But I like to keep it like close enough to the TC because that's what I'm used to. Then we have Appaloosa, which is part of a lot of end boards access code for clean OTKs and then the Zelantis because you can protect like your IP from battle that way and you can also play around Super Poly in some interesting ways because some branded players are playing that as a breaker. So that is the deck. Now let's jump into the combo. So the combo I'm going to show you is Snake Eye Ash. As you can see, these normal monsters are just hand traps because I don't want to ash my own stuff. So I'm going to start with one for one, but it's the exact same thing as if you open up Snake Eye Ash. So let's just get rid of some garbage and then we're going to get out our snake eye ash then we are going to use snake eye ashes effect and we are going to get our poplar Then poplar effect will activate special summoning itself to the field then we will use poplar's effect to search the field spell to have the field spell at all costs here then we will activate the field spell and we will place oak from our deck into the spell and trap zone then we will activate snake eye ash and we will send the oak and itself to special summon our Lamberge. Oh, look at that, baby. Whoa, fucking sick. Okay, then we will make ourselves an IP Mascarena. So Flamberg plus Poplar is going to go into IP. Look at that crazy, crazy girl right here. Then we're going to activate Flamberge, Chainlink 1 to play around Bell, and then Poplar, Chainlink 2. There's also why Bell is so ass into this matchup, and uh, we're going to choose Flamberge. So Bell is so ass into this matchup because, like, like you can always chain block so only I guess you can like get around Promethean Princess but at that point they're all so far ahead already. Make sure you revive the Oak here because we're actually going to use Oak's effect to revive the Poplar. So then Oak effect is going to special summon out Poplar. Now you may think here oh but what if I nib you here? Well if you nib me here all of these cards go away. The field spell sees your nib being special summoned, summons out the Flamberge and then Flamberge places the IP back from the the graveyard into the spell and trap zone then I pass turn I still have three cards in hand you summon something the field spell summons out the IP and IP plus flamberge goes into a new monster which is unicorn again spinning something and then the flamberge summons back a bunch of this shit giving me follow-up and now you just wasted a nib 
I still have three cards, which are probably like hand traps and stuff. And I have all of my resources back. So I'm definitely just nuking you next turn. And that assumes I opened no other extenders. So that's why Nib is ass. Next, we are going to make a Linkaribo because we do want that for next turn. Getting rid of this Poplar right here. Yup, yup, yup. And then we want to make an Appaloosa because Appaloosa is crazy. And a lot of people are not playing board breakers right now because board breakers generally suck into this deck. Because if I had opened Diabell Star, I had to Omni negate. So your tactics was never resolving. So, you know, no one wants to gamble on that. And so that's why breakers suck. Now we're going to activate Oak's effect, sending our Flamberge to special summon another Flamberge right here. Here's our second baby girl. Then Flamberge is going to activate and is going to place the IP from the graveyard into the Spell and Trap Zone. So this is the end board. We used only one card technically because again, I had to discard for one for one. So technically you have four cards in your hand here. Next turn, you have three negates with Appaloosa. When your opponent summons something, your IP gets summoned out or you can also just Flamberge it if you want. The reason you want to wait with summoning it out is because if you go like Flamberge effect and they go Cosmic Cyclone, then you're doomed. Whereas if you just wait for them to summon, then you activate the field spell, summon out IP. If they Cosmic Cyclone chain, you can chain Flamberge and save your IP that way. So then they summon something, you will IP effect, IP plus Flamberge into Unicorn, spin something from them. Flamberge will trigger, bringing back all of your monsters, which then also start searching. So like your Ash can search another Ash for next turn. Your Oak will revive back your Poplar and then your Poplar will add back a OSS. And so boom, you have all the follow up in the world. They are never ever killing you because you again, you still have four cards in your hand and it's GG over. And that is all out of one Snake Eye Ash. So next you might think, OK, but what do we do if we open up a way to Diabell Star and an Ash? Let me show you. So we're going to normal summon Ash. We're going to activate effect. We don't want to show our opponent just yet that we have wanted access because they might imperm here. Now we go, haha, wanted, Lamao, we combo anyway. So we get our Poplar and then we activate Poplar because it was just added and it special summons out. Then we activate Poplar. Now, very important here, you want to now chain your wanted before you choose your Poplar target because you don't know which hand traps they have just yet. So this way, if they do anything, we will kind of know what we have to do. So we get our wanted, we get our Diabell Star, then Poplar gets our field spell. Okay, now we're going to activate our field spell and we're going to this time place the Flamberge. Next, we're going to turn our Poplar into Linkaribo and then Poplar is going to activate, sending itself to the Spell and Trap Zone. So then we Diabell Star, sending the Poplar from the field and then we activate Diabell Star, which sets our OSS. Then we activate OSS, sending our Linkaribo, which summons our Jet Synchron. Next, we make Borolode Savage out of Diabell Star and Jet Synchron. And our Borolode Savage is going to attach the Linkaribo. So this is where you would uh, bischil them. So you can bischil the Linkaribo so this doesn't get an Omni Negate. Next, let's activate Snake Eye Ash, sending the Flamberge. We're going to get access to our Oak and then we are going to go Flamberge effect and Oak effect. So Oak gets access to our Jet Synchron and Flamberge gives us our Poplar and our Snake Eye Ash. Next, let's make a Formula Synchron, our little Broom Broom race car right here, which will also allow us to draw another card. Now, let's activate our Jet Synchron effect. We are going to discard a hand trap, I guess in this case, could have discarded that one that right there. Get our Jet back out, which makes our IP out of the Jet and the Poplar right here. Bada beam, bada boom, we have an IP. And then we will turn our IP and our O into a Promethean Princess. And then the Promethean Princess is going to get our Oak back. Boom, broken, broken boss monster will one day be banned probably. So then we activate Princess, special summoning out our Oak. And now here's something that you probably don't expect. We activate the Oak, sending the Princess to special summon the Flamberge. Normally it's in your deck, but sadly we drew it. So we get ourselves our Flamberge and then our Flamberge activates and places the IP right here. Here. Then we still have a free draw from Wanted. So we're going to banish our Wanted, putting our OSS back into the grave and drawing one card. All right. So remember we discarded the Trihorn Dragon earlier. That's a hand trap. So let's pretend we discarded the Wanted instead and still have the Trihorn. And then we drew the Flamberge. Let's pretend we didn't do that either. So normally here, you would have four cards in your hand. 
you know, in the optimal situation. You have four cards in your hand still. You have a Omni Negate right here. If your opponent special summons a monster, you destroy it with Princess. You can Formula plus Borrowload in your opponent's turn into a Baron right here, which is another Omni Negate. And then the IP plus the Flamberge or things it summons, you know, it kind of depends. But the IP plus that goes into a Unicorn, which also spins. So you have Omni Negate, Omni Negate, a spin. A special summon, destroy, endless follow-up, four cards in your hand. Your opponent is not fucking breaking this. And breakers are dog shit. Also, if you do your interrupts correctly, you cannot get super polyed at any point. Because if you look at this board right now, you cannot be super polyed, right? Dark, fire, light, no proper typing, nothing matches up. So you're gonna do the Omni Negate with Borrowload. Then you're going to activate Synchron. Synchron plus Borrowload goes into Baron. Your IP comes out. IP plus Flamberge goes into Nightmare Unicorn. Spins something. Flamberge special summons out some fires. Those fires get destroyed by Princess. Cool. Here they can Super Poly. But they already had to play through two Omni Negates and a spin and your hand traps. So no, Super Poly is not breaking this board. It's just GG over. You just won the game. Good job. Congratulations. You are Master 1. So that is all for today. Hope you found this interesting. If you want to see more like this, be sure to subscribe at the current rate we will be hitting 100,000 subscribers in seven years which is too slow but it's already faster than a few days ago so if we keep this up keep those subscriptions rolling bada beam bada boom 100k hopefully before i'm 34 i will see you soon ciao